911 emergency. Nine one one. What's your emergency? Welcome back, everybody, to We Speak Dispatch. Boy, do we have a hot topic <laughs> lined up for you today. We're going to be talking about mandatory overtime, voluntary overtime, uh, training, and how you cover the dispatch floor. And we are joined by a special guest. Ben, go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, I'm Ben. I've been uh, in dispatch for uh, over 16 years, full-time, 20, when you count my extra help time, uh, for a... Uh, Sheriff's Department in Southern California, um, and I've been a supervisor for the last six years. All right, awesome. We're also joined by our normal suspects. We got Glenna here, and we're also joined by Doug. So how are you guys doing? Yay! Hey. Excited about this topic. All right. So <laughs> Exciting, I'm gonna go, is that the word? <laughs> I'm going to go to Glenna first. Uh -huh. Glenna, how do you guys fill overtime projecting like forward to the next month? Say you're going to be short how much notice do you give them and how do you fill those spots where you're short? That is a good question. <laughs> so let me let me preface it with saying I am a line dispatcher, so I don't do the ordering and, and all of that, um, but I do get ordered. So kind of a different <laughs> perspective than, than you guys are going to have. Um, well, you we, were acting supervisor for a short period of time, so, you know. I was, yes, I had the power <laughs> and I hated ordering because I knew what they were saying on the floor. I knew that they were talking <laughs> crap. <laughs> um, so we will put the overtime in the book and then we encourage voluntary um, participation. Um, normally we get it filled with just voluntary um, compliance. People will sign up um, eating, either adding to their shift or coming in on their day off. If it is a four hour block that is not filled, four hours or more, we will order to it. If it's less than a four hour block, we will still order to it, but not on your day off. So we'll extend somebody's shift. So we can work up to 16 hours. We normally work 10 or 12 hours. Um, so we can order them up to four hours on top of a 12 hour shift. So that's how nice. they do it. Ben, what about you guys? How do you guys fill spots for overtime? So um, being in a um, sheriff's office, we end up having, it's hard to say because we're not fully staffed right now, but we're definitely better staffed than some agencies. Um, we actually have um, two people who are part-time. Um, they share a shift. And then we have somewhere right now in the ballpark of four to five extra help dispatchers. And three of them probably pick up 30 to 40 hours a week oh, um, wow. on, on average. Um, the reason that they don't go full-time is they get to pick their schedule. So don't have all the perks, but you get to pick and choose your schedule. So you're like, mm, I don't really feel like working this week. They don't have to. But the wow. next week, we're like, hey, I want a full week. I want a full week. I'll cover it. Um, so we get kind of by with our extra help people filling a lot of our holes a lot of the time. Yeah. And Doug, what about you? How do you guys? Um, and we'll try to hit them up first one because. So that's what that's where we're at. We we uh we use those most time. We're on a mandatory right now, so everybody works four hours of mandatory overtime. Um, and then like Glenna, a lot of people just volunteer pick up stuff. Is that four hours of overtime every day? Uh, on one of our rotations for a while when we were short, it was two every day. We we used to be on four tens, and then we went to four twelves. Yeah. And right now we're on twelves, but every other like for me, it's every other Wednesday. I work four extra hours, so it should be my flex day but I work four extra hours of overtime on that wow. day. Wow. Bonus is the following week I have that Wednesday off. So, you know, it's like kind of a, a give and take. Wow. Doug, how do you guys, how'd you guys do it at your agency? Well, back in the day when I was working, um, we were really short. Our staffing was really taking a hit. We had a lot of people out on injuries and medicals and things like that. So really short. So we would do the monthly schedule and post the overtime needed and we had about five or six people that were really, they loved overtime because in my agency, you got paid once a month. And if you've never been paid once a month, by the third week of the month, you're eating like Del Taco because you oh, can't I afford bet. anything. So, so people like that middle of the month, you'd get an overtime check if you worked overtime. So that's why they would work a lot of overtime. So they get basically another check. So we had a lot of people do that. But, and then I kind of like, tried to convince people to help out when you had people that were busting their tail working so much overtime and some people that didn't work any. And yeah. I'm like, I didn't want to order them to do it yet, but I would just tell them like, you know, I mean, 
really? Could you just stay over tomorrow or whatever? And we did use mandatory overtime to cover if, uh, I mean, some of it was late notice. Somebody calls in sick for graveyard. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah. I would call people at home and be like, hey, uh, you know, I need you to come in tonight. And people would be like, I'm busy or whatever. And, you know, we had to do what we had to do. We had to cover right. it. So would you tell yeah. them, no, you, you're being ordered in? It depends on what their excuse was. If they said, I've got a sick kid, I can't leave the house, my husband's on the road, he's an officer, whatever, then I'd have to go to the next person and say, hey, I tried to mandatory them, they're busy, you're up. And it's like, and a lot of times, I mean, a lot of times, to be honest morning. with you, we would cover it, the supervisor would cover it. I just say, forget it. It's easier if I just come in at midnight and cover. So, yeah, you know, I mean, but sometimes it was not pleasant. We had to do that and it was not a very nice thing. We have, a, we have a list now we finally started for our agency. We were kind of one of the last ones around us that went to mandatory. Yeah. And then we started getting to that point where we got close where people weren't picking up. And we're like, we've never mandatory to anybody. Do we have a policy for that? How are we going to arbitrarily do this? And we had to go through and we started tracking how much overtime people were working. Yeah. And we have a list. So if you're at the bottom of the list in terms of most recent overtime worked versus least amount of hours worked. So like, Hey, you're low at the bottom, but you worked earlier in the week. We go to the next one on the yes. list. Yeah. Um, so and so that people know now. So now there's no like, oh, they're not going to come to me. <laughs> people know the list exists now. They know, oh, I haven't worked a lot lately. Or I've been on vacation. I haven't picked up stuff. They know their names probably come around. So we try to give notice, you know, better than like the day of. Normally we see the holes beforehand go, Hey, if by Tuesday nobody's picked this up, you're coming in Friday to work this shift. And so, yeah. like, yeah, we did the same thing. We'd warn people that if this happens, you're going to have to stay or you're going to have to come in or whatever. And, you know, it's not popular, yeah. that's for sure. And I, every supervisor I've ever trained, I've had to explain to them that, you know, this is a business. I mean, we have to run. So yeah. we either yeah. cover or we get one of them to cover. So, yep. You know. We do a monthly list where I work. So we post it about the middle of the month. For the next month we forecast ahead and we say here's our list of overtime where we're short and we allow people to go through and sign up and then we assign it by seniority and then wherever there's a hole where somebody did not where the shift didn't get covered to minimums we then look at the total number of overtime hours worked for the year oh. so um and what happens is the person that's worked the least amount of overtime gets mandatory. So at the beginning of the year, we rarely mandatory because people are signing up, signing up, trying to build their overtime. And then we're mandatory at we'll the end of the year and it resets every first of the year. And then we allow them to work 16 hour shifts on their Monday or their Friday, but we're an eight hour department overall. So we don't allow 16s because we don't like the short turnaround time. We like to give them yeah. Uh, their rest. So we only allow 12 hours on most days. An interesting thing, somebody puts in to go to training. They <laughs> want to go see, you know, Doug speak at his class, or maybe they're going to watch a virtual training or do one of those things. And you have to pull them from the dispatch floor. Or maybe you have to recertify in a test or do some peer training or whatever it is. So whose responsibility is it to cover their spot when it's on their working day? Is it their responsibility or is it the department's responsibility to cover? And I'm going to go to uh, Ben first on this one. We go department. If, if it's a training you want to go to and, and it's not going to overly impact our operations, we say, yeah, you're, you're going. And most of the time we're telling people, um, our training supervisor is really good, that you tell her what kind of training you're interested in. She looks for him, says, hey, this one's coming up in two months. Do you have any you know, problems or issues, you know, sometimes people are going to leave on a trip on their days off and we don't post obviously that. So as long as it fits, we, we then are under our obligation to fill behind that. Mm -hmm. Very rarely have I ever heard us have somebody come to us and say, Hey, I'm leaving for this training assignment. Go ahead and fill my shift. It's normally us coming to them saying, here's the opportunity. Yeah. Uh, if, if they want to go, would you mandatory somebody to cover for them then? Most of the time we'll do some adjustments, oh, okay. um, yeah. it, it, you know, flex somebody around. Maybe right now we're on 12, so we have days and nights only, no, re no real swing shifts. We might flip somebody to a swing instead to help cover, and then maybe somebody can piecemeal around it. Or the training supervisor, in some instances, she'll work the floor for part of that shift if somebody doesn't pick up the whole shift behind them going to a class. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Glenn, how do you guys do it at your agency? Well, we don't normally um, order somebody in for training, um, but like Ben and I are both in California, so we are mandated to have 24 hours every two hours, every two years of ongoing training. 
Um, so this last year with COVID and all of the training classes being canceled, we did end up um, allowing people to cover shifts and paying the overtime for it. But normally, and especially nowadays, there's training on weekends, there's training on your days off. We only work three days a week the first week and then four days a week the second week. So on your short week, you can go on a Thursday or Friday or even a, a Saturday or a Sunday in some cases. Um, the only time that we really, um, that, that the dispatcher herself or himself really like, hey, can you cover this for me? Is like when they want to go to something and they have their hours in. Um, peer support coordinator, so that doesn't really have much to do with dispatch. It's, it's an ancillary assignment. So they, they won't pay overtime to cover my shift to go to the conference every year. So I have to get with my partners. Hey, will you take comp time for this and cover this shift for me? And, and I've never not had it covered, but that's the only time that we make the dispatchers um, get the coverage themselves. Yeah. Doug, what about when, where you were working? Well, we kind of had a different situation because I'm sure the rest of you did have this too. We, any kind of like mandatory or stuff like that were policies involved, we had unions to deal with. So, I mean, I'd get calls from the union reps all the time about this or that or whatever, because somebody's complaining about mandatory or whatever. So when it came to training, we tried to send like half the crew goes from training from like 8, 8, 8 p.m. or 8 a.m. to like noon and then they go to work and then the other part goes. So we would kind of like do a lot of creative scheduling. And that's one thing that I think my captains and uh, everybody were happy about the fact that we could do a lot of creative scheduling. Kind of like Ben was saying, adjust shifts. We did a lot of that. Yeah. It was kind of, how about if you work this time? And, how and about it's that? interesting to me that you guys can adjust their shifts because like Doug said, we have a union contract as well. And we have to give several days notice before we can just switch somebody's shift well the the um, contract that our people have it says the very first paragraph of the of the union contract says the commander uh has to run the center and can use whatever i mean that gives them basically carte blanche the commander mm -hmm. can make a decision so they would always try to throw it back to me saying well you made the decision not the commander and i'm like well he's right here <laughs> <You want to laughs> <talk about it? laughs> last question for this one is we kind of touched on it just a little bit. It sounds like we all allow people to sign up for overtime. There's a list that goes around. You can sign up. You have two to three people that all sign up for the same shift or the same hours. Who gets it at your agency? Uh, Doug will go backwards. Who gets it at your agency? Ours was based on the number of hours you've worked in that year. We kept track every single month, how many hours you've got. And then whoever had the least amount would get it. But sometimes I try, because I know people want it. I know people were so I try to like convince people like, why don't you take half and they'll take half and then you both can have some overtime. So it was so the person that's numbers. worked the least amount of overtime, even if somebody else had more seniority than them, yeah. they could, they would bump the person that's worked like 12, 16, yeah. 20 hours. Yeah. Well, you're, our, rewar our... you're rewarding people not signing up. <laughs> Look, man, don't get on me about it, but I'm just saying. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, because we had a lot of, like I said before, we had a lot of our senior people did not want to work overtime and they basically refused to always work overtime. The younger ones wanted to do it because they love that check in the middle of the month. So, yeah. you know, I could kind of wheel and deal with people and kind of feel <laughs> like, I felt like a used car salesman sometimes. What's it going to take to put you in this overtime slot today? <laughs> I like I like playing the devil's advocate. advocate. Glenna, <laughs> how do you guys do it at your agency? Two or three people sign up for the same shift. Who gets it? We don't, that doesn't happen. We have one schedule. We either have the book or it, it is on the, on the computer, but it's just one schedule. So once somebody signs up for it, they sign up for it. The only person that's wow. ever really been able to bump is we do have a part-timer. Um, it's cheaper to pay the part-timer than it is to pay overtime. So the part-timer would get it. But the part-timer can only work 25 hours. So she's on a set schedule. It would only be if she didn't have her 25 hours for the week. Yeah, but so the other people that are, have more seniority can't get it because a part-timer is kicking them out of it? Yep. Seniority wow. has nothing to do with it. Joe, any thoughts on that? You want to? Oh yeah, I got that? thoughts on that. So you're a first, you're a first, <laughs> come, you're a first come we first serve. MOU. I'm sorry, Joe. Go ahead. You're first come first serve. What happens when somebody's on their Saturday and then the book gets updated that there's overtime, but they didn't have time to volunteer, and now somebody wow. just comes in and says, "I want it." They get it. Wow. How do you notify people? Do you notify people on their days off? Nope. Okay. <laughs> And yeah, I, I, remember, like, I like, I like posting, <laughs> yeah, I like posting these questions. Ben, how do you guys do it? So to, to kind of piggyback off the end of that question, we page out 
Uh, if you, and it's not required with our people to be on our paging system. So we have the list like everybody else does, but if stuff pops up that's in between stuff that was listed, we'll page it out. And so you can volunteer to have your cell phone get the text through our CAD system that says, shift available tonight, da da da, da. Like as we were talking, my phone just went off. Somebody called out for night. They have an opening. And gotta go. They have an opening. I'm day shift, so I won't touch nights right now. Um, <laughs> they have a night shift available tonight and they just paged it out. And so now anybody who's first come, first serve to call in gets it. So what if there what might if be a race to dial in. So if nobody that? calls in, who gets it? Uh, then it just goes unfilled and they run short. It's not, it's, we're, we're at like the bare minimum and you're going to work your tail off for that entire time versus having that extra body that helps absorb what's going on. So yeah. explain we're though, then how many people are in the room on one of your shifts though? So when you say it just goes unfilled to a lot of the 911 centers that have one person, that would be nobody's there. <laughs> right. You know, so, so explain how many people are in the room. So people so, so for my, for my agency, we have four radios that have to be covered at all times. Oh, um, nice. So with that, that's our bare, that's literally where our bare minimum has to be. We have changed it to say our minimum staffing needs to be six. We dip into five quite often. And it's basically because we do EMD. So we have call takers now. So we have four radios plus a call taker. And then normally a supervisor is where our, our minimum staffing is supposed to be. But we can dip into to five. So like tonight, they're down a fifth dispatcher. So they have four dispatchers plus a call taker. So they still have all radios covered plus somebody be first up for phones. It's not ideal, but we get by. Wow. Yeah. Um, Wait, I have I have a question. So one call taker, that does anybody else answer the phone? So, <laughs> so ours ours is our, ours is uh, we have a priority system that our fire and EMS dispatchers are next up for phones um, to pick up on nine one ones, and then our we do two law radios. We have our our primary and our secondary. Our secondary dispatchers, the next one at that, and then absolute last resort should be our primary answering if you know all hell breaks loose wow. and the ones light up. Um, but that's and that's again at our minimum. I, I worked yesterday and I had three call takers and six dispatchers working. Wow. So you know I was I was on a plus yesterday because part of it we had new trainees, so we had extra staffing going on. Um, oh, okay. so that was that was a bonus for me yesterday because when it did get busy we already had three call takers rolling and then it fell to me and somebody else working a console to pick up after that for us it's projected overtime versus short notice overtime projected we send out the list by email and we offer people to be on the list with their home email as well so if they're on their day off or whatever they can see that it's been posted we also leave it posted for a minimum, unless it's short notice, for eight hours so that people can sign up for it. And that's, uh, we typically leave it posted for a week or two to be uh, for the projected. For short notice, we just go right in the order of uh, seniority and call people over the phone. Wow. So as you can tell, there's a <laughs> lot of different ways of assigning overtime. This has been an excellent episode from We Speak Dispatch. A lot of <laughs> questions come up, but the main thing is what works at your agency may not work at another agency. Right. So everybody's going to do it different. There's pros and cons of doing it every way. I just ask that everybody take the time to learn how your agency does it so you make sure you feel that correct. If you want to be a guest on We Speak Dispatch, we can be found on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. We are on several different podcast platforms, and we have a special mask that is coming out. I don't have one. I would put it on, but you can go look at the picture on Instagram and Facebook. It's been put up of We Speak Dispatch and be looking for certain posts coming on our social media platforms to know how you can get a mask. And last but not least, if you want to be a guest, be sure and email us at wespeakdispatch at gmail.com and leave your comments below on how you feel overtime at your agency. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye now. Hey, this is Jill, and you've been listening to another great episode of We Speak Dispatch, proudly sponsored by our friends at Zybex. 911 emergency. What's your emergency?